All right, welcome back to Cosmic Reach. About an hour ago, a new version came out, which at the bottom right corner of the screen here, you can see 0.2.0. And there were quite a few things that was added with this release. And you can see that the middle number here was updated from one to two, and then the rightmost number was reset back to zero. So the biggest thing that I see in the patch notes is that there's a new world type called survival, which you can see right here. And if I scroll through and we still have nostalgic islands, moon, flat world, and now we have survival. Looks like it's taking longer to load. I think this is the world generation that uh, the developer has been working on for a while. I've seen it a little bit in the past, but I haven't seen any finish. Oh my goodness. Okay, yeah, this is way different than uh, than what I remember he was working on in the past. So, it looks like we have an actual, an actual, honest-to-God, Earth-looking world type. If we go into our options here, you can see that the option for changing the sky lighting is gone. Um, I don't know if that's just on this world type or if it's also on the other ones. I don't really care, to be honest. Um, I think it needs to stay at dynamic lighting because this is supposed to be the, the, the Earth world generation, I think. But if we go into options, I'm going to keep it on peaceful. And then I'm also going to change my game mode over to creative. And if we start flying and we look around, you can see that we have some big hills. We have a bunch of trees. And these trees are actually new as well. This is a new type of tree. Before we only had those, um, those coconut trees. They looked a little bit like palm trees and they kind of swayed out to the side. But now these trees are completely upright. We also have new tools. So you can see here we have um, aluminum tools. We have iron tools, and we have stone tools. So before we only had stone tools. And you'll also notice that the world not only looks better because of the new generation, but also because the lighting is a bit different. Uh, not the sky lighting. The sky lighting is still the dynamic lighting, but the blocks themselves now have lighting based on the face of the block and where the sun is. So if I look up, the sun is right there in the sky, which means that the light should be more on this side of the leaves or of the um, the grass or the stone or whatever. So let's look at this side of the stone. You can see that the lighting looks like that. On top, the lighting is brighter because the sun is up in the sky. And on this side, it's darker. And I think as the sun moves through the sky throughout this day, we'll start to see that lighting change a little bit. So this was a much needed change. I think this is awesome. Very good job with the new lighting. It does make everything look a lot better. And let's try to fly into this mountain because it looks like we have a cave system right here. So inside this cave, it's very dark. I'm going to have to grab some lights. Let's grab some, some cyan lights. And let's see just how far this cave goes or how deep it goes. Luckily, there's no monsters because I'm on peaceful. I'm just going to kind of wander through here. Uh, not too quickly because I want to check things out. So the cave width is good. This feels a lot like caving in Minecraft. Um, obviously, there's no ores yet. We're missing. If you look in the inventory, we have... These three ores right here, the iron, the gold, and the aluminum. But it looks like there's no ores spawning yet inside the stone. And wow, okay, here's a ravine structure. Is there a way to do x-ray? Oh yeah, okay. So if I no-clip into the wall, you can actually see all the caves generating underneath us. So they look pretty smooth. They look pretty wide. So I don't think you're going to get really stuck into any small corridors. Uh, there's a weird one right there that has kind of the cutoff on the side. It's kind of a straight side. Um, but yeah. There they are. So there's not just caves everywhere. You are going to have to mine around to try to find them. They do look very vertical from what I can see. Obviously, there's horizontal components of them, but I think if you're caving in this game, at least with this current world generation, and obviously this is going to change. Okay, this is this is just uh, the first introduction of this kind of thing. But um, they look very vertical, uh, which, which makes sense, because if you don't know, Cosmic Reach currently has an infinite y-axis so you can build as high as you want and perhaps as low as you can want so if i hit f3 you can see in the top left our y coordinate is at negative 18 right now and you can see if we keep on sinking down and down now we're at negative 40 the caves just keep on going it basically looks like it goes down basically into infinity so i wonder how that's gonna play with for example, lava. If there's lava at some starting at some Y level or something like that, maybe certain ores could only spawn maybe if you get to like Y equals negative 10,000 or something. I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential to play around there. Uh, but this is just kind of crazy how much height we have and how many caves there are. And if we look up, we're already pretty far underground. You can see the cave I lit up right there. 
And we can see all the trees and all the rolling hills and the skylight. Man, that dynamic sky looks great. You can also see my position in the F3 menu of uh, the X coordinate is negative 3572. Now, this update also made it so that when you spawn, it's in a radius of 5,000 blocks from 0, 0. So you're not always going to spawn at 0, 0. I think that's how it was before. And other than the caves, I want to... So let's get, let's get out of F3. Um, other than the caves, I want to check out the rest of this before the lighting goes away, because I can't change it. So you can see the cave lit up there. And then, yeah, you can see the lighting changing on these trees. So the sun is over there in the sky. And you can see as we look out at all the trees, the lighting is glowing the faces of the cubes that are pointing towards the sun. So very, very cool. This looks awesome. It's going to be a huge boost in quality for screenshots um, is the thing that I'm thinking of. Yeah, one of my favorite things about games like this is just taking screenshots. For example, on Steam with a lot of games, I take a lot of screenshots just to remember things. With the world generation, obviously we have hills, we have trees. We also have these little lake areas with, um, it looks like there's sand in the water there, so good. And there's a massive circular hole in the ground that honestly looks kind of terrifying. Um, it looks like some kind of giant creature burrowed into the ground there. Uh, I'm not going to go in there. We also have oceans off to the side. They look very, very deep, which is a very good thing. Back when Minecraft didn't have deep oceans, that was something that I never liked. I think that a big body of water should be very deep, um, especially if you're planning on putting some kind of sea creature in the game, or underwater structures or something like that. And we can look back at the coastline, looks awesome. Oh, we've got something right here, a bunch of blocks that are on top of the water. Alright, I'm trying to see if there's any biomes in the game, official biomes. It doesn't look like it based on the F3 menu, but there might be and it might just not show up on that menu. So let's drop down here and see what this is. Okay, yeah, it's snow, so it's... um of broken off ice sheets in the water. Man, that skyline does look really cool with the island there and the trees. Yeah, this is awesome. What a great update. This is really good world generation already. Obviously, there's a lot to work on. There's a lot to fill the world with, uh, make the caves more interesting, put something in the water, just all kinds of stuff to do. If I was the developer of this game and I had a world type like this where the potential is there, like the base is created, so this is kind of the baseline for this world generation. You can see how much potential there is to add all kinds of stuff. And to me, that would be very inspiring to, uh, to continue working. And I just checked, but I suppose those trees there are called poplar trees. It's P-O-P-L-A-R. I'm not sure if you can actually plant them. I don't see how you could. Maybe if you plant a coconut in the ground on this world generation, it'll all automatically be a poplar tree. I'm not gonna try it right now, but I'll definitely try it in the near future. All right, spawning in a new world. I just wanted to check things out. Okay, so here's the coconut trees. So it looks like um, the generation I got on that other world is very different than what we're seeing here. So the coconut trees are on the sand. I have to go back into creative mode again so I can double jump to, to take flight. Yeah, it looks like we're in some kind of desert biome. So I do think that there are legitimate biomes in the game. It's just not showing up in the F3 menu. Um, this one's a deserty island, it looks like, with a big mountain in the middle which uh, kind of looks like a volcano to some extent. And I know that the developer is a fan of volcanoes and wants them to be in the game. So if this was a volcano and there was a crater in the top with some lava and maybe the lava shot out, man, that'd be really, really cool. Especially at night, you can imagine the red lighting shooting everywhere. That would be awesome. So obviously a very hilly, deserty area. you got some big caves in the sand. You've got the coconut trees spanning out to the side. A beautiful blue ocean with um, that's pretty deep, and you got some sand coming up as well. I'm interested in seeing what kind of generation there is that I'm missing. Oh, interesting. Okay, so with the desert biome, it looks like the stone that's used is this um, basalt, I think it is. Oh, here's some ore, actually. Here's some aluminum. So it looks like there is ore spawning, but it's just very rare. Let's dig that up. Yeah, it's only one block. Huh. Interesting. I wonder why that happened. So there was one block of ore there. I hope it's not actually that rare in the in the in the game. <laughs> I hope that's um, something that is just experimental. Obviously, it is. I'm just I'm just saying stuff. If I light this up, it keeps going down. I'm not going to go down there. I can just no clip into the wall and see how big it is. So you can see the caves are are quite vertical. 
Um, I think that might have to change a little bit. I think the caves should be more horizontal because it is kind of annoying to traverse caves and just go up and down the entire time. Mining stuff out of the walls and creating scaffolding, it can be fun in some cases, but if it's all the time, I think that would get pretty annoying. And you can imagine dying a lot by falling off and taking fall damage. Oh, here's this dark stone. Now I, I can't remember what these what these blocks are called because it's been a while since I've really talked about them. Yeah, that's another thing. I think that um, it'd be it'd be nice to get some tool tips. So when you hover your mouse over the item, it tells you what it is. I've wanted that for quite a while, but we haven't seen it yet. I think there might be some kind of complication with getting that to work. We've got a massive mountain over there. Man, that thing is huge. It keeps going. It just keeps on going. Wow, that's pretty epic. You can imagine building a base on top of there or like building a scaffolded base around the mountain that kind of looks out at everything. Oh, neat. On top of this mountain, there's some trees. Oh, those are poplar trees. Those aren't coconut trees. So we have coconut trees down there. We have this massive ass cave that goes pretty much straight down, it looks like. And then we have poplar trees at the top with some grass. And this is no ordinary grass and dirt. This is just grass. So there's no dirt on the side. Um, I guess that happens if you're at a high elevation in the desert biome, maybe. And then you get these poplar trees growing up here as well. And it looks like we can just keep going up and up and up all the way up to the summit. So if I was to have a house up here, I can imagine one of the things I'd want to do is I'd want to get down to the bottom where all the water is, maybe the ocean, and take a boat over to a friend's, a friend's base camp. And I need some way to do that. So perhaps it would be cool if instead of doing something like taking a mine cart or something like that, maybe we could have something like a zip line so I'd attach a zip line to this tree here, and it would go all the way down, and I'd attach it to some kind of, or like a tree down there, or some makeshift uh, bottom zip line zone area thing. And then I could hop on the zip line and take it down. And then to get back up, maybe I'd have to, I'd have to jump all the way up, or I could just build a staircase, or maybe we can get some kind of machine, like an escalator, because I think, at least from the direction that I'm hearing about this game, um, it sounds like there will be a focus on machines and more sciencey things. Uh, at least I hope that's the direction that it goes in. So maybe something like an escalator could be cool. Or even something like a jetpack. Although I'd be a little bit more weary with a jetpack because I think that could definitely be kind of a game-breaking thing, kind of something that can be abused, um, make the game too easy or something like that. All right, once more, a new world game mode creative. Look at how deep the ocean is. That's honestly pretty terrifying. So if I fall into here, we sink pretty slowly, and you can see the waves on top of the water above us. And look below us, it's just complete darkness. Terrifying. I have no idea how close I am to the bottom of the ocean here, but it looks like it just keeps going deeper and deeper. That is awesome. That actually really makes me want to make an underwater base at some point and light it up. I don't know if you know of a game called Ever 17, but it's a very old visual novel. It's a classic among the visual novel people who like playing visual novels. Uh, it's not available anymore because I think the company that made it went out of business a long time ago. But in Ever 17, uh, the basis, the setting of the game was an island on an ocean like this. And the top zone was grass and trees and stuff. It was called Insel Null. And underneath that was an underwater water, uh, a water park, not a water park, but uh, basically a, an amusement park where you can walk around and there's like trees underwater and, and iron and glass domes and stuff. And basically the conflict is that you get stuck. The place starts flooding and you get stuck down there with a number of people. And there's all kinds of shenanigans that goes on. And basically the objective is to try to escape. I don't know, whenever I think of an underwater base, I always think of that game. So if I built an underwater base, maybe it would look something like the amusement park in Ever 17. I think that'd be pretty cool. And clearly the oceans are deep enough to do something like that. So this world generation looks like the first world that I generated. Uh, just kind of the same stuff. And we have some poplar trees, or a lot of poplar trees, and then they're mixed with the coconut trees on the side. So I think that's going to be it for this video. I just wanted to show off the newest update. I didn't show everything in the patch notes, but that's okay. I didn't want to. Mainly, I just wanted to show off this new world generation. I think it's really, really cool. And um, I think moving from pre-alpha to alpha, I just saw a comment from the developer on Discord that in order for him to move, his two requirements right now that I saw are one of them is some rudimentary version of multiplayer, and the second one is that any graphical issues on integrated GPUs need to be fixed. 
because I think he's been having problems with those for quite a while, which I think that's a pretty good checklist. Maybe take off the multiplayer portion, uh, especially if progress is particular, particularly slow on that. I think maybe we can we can get a solid survival version uh, and switch to alpha before we get a, a multiplayer version. But that's just my opinion. However it goes is however it goes, and I think I'll be happy regardless. You really gotta have a high render distance in order to see if you're on top of one of these mountains because it's all just void. Uh, you don't really get much of a view. And that's actually an interesting problem that I haven't thought about before. If you have a world height that's too high and your mountains go too high up and you look out, you can't expect that all of your players are going to have a machine that's strong enough to support a high render distance. So that's, I guess, just a, a game design issue that might have to be worked around somehow. Maybe blocks beyond that distance can be rendered, renders the entire mesh as one color or something like that so that you can see farther without having a super powerful machine. Um, maybe that can be an option in the options menu, not really sure. But anyway, I'm going to try to pose for a good screenshot of the sun on the horizon with the new world generation, and uh, I think that's going to be it for this video. So really cool stuff. Looking forward to seeing people's screenshots and what people do with this generation and, and how it progresses as well as we move into a more survival-focused version of the game. So thank you very much for watching.